Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this Saturday morning's Fife Properties show. And empty promise we're talking about today, Jim. And it's about the, the time in between. Story of my life. <laughs> empty promises. <laughs> <laughs> but that's so, another yeah. story. That's another story. And that's a story with my people would say with a psychologist <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we're, we're going to touch on the subject of turning the vacant spell in between tenancies and things into a brighter future for your buy to let portfolio and your and your and your buy to let properties because some people like think oh god avoid and uh, obviously avoid's not what you ideally want but yeah. you could really use that time to to make your buy to let investment so much better yeah, I, I I can't disagree with that at all. Um, you know, a void could be a blessing in disguise when you have mm -hmm. a. And, and for people that don't understand buy to let lingo, let's explain what a void is. Yeah. It's a period in between a tenant moving out and a new tenant moving in, and and I kind of think so. Most buy to let people will say no shit, share look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but for people that are first starting out, you've got to understand that. Remember, this is all about timeless content, and you know, new people that will watch this and listen to this again because they do, and we know that. Um, so it's just explaining that's exactly what a void is. So if you if you're unsure about any any word that we are using, please feel free just to highlight it and just say you know what does that mean? Uh, become this is this is goes back to you know touching a bit of wealth creation there. <laughs> Got that in earlier. Um, <laughs> wealth creation for twelve thirty on uh, uh, Monday. Monday. Uh, we're talking about cash flow is king, yeah. Yeah, cash flow is king on Monday. Yeah. And we're going to touch on the subject a wee bit more, but just to say that, uh, you know, become a student of of everything you're doing, everything you're watching, everything you're engaging with, everything you're reading, uh, everything you're listening to, um, become a student, you know, listen to, you know, why is that and why is this? And, and just don't accept what the person says. Go and find out for yourself and do a bit of more research about, you know, what's been said. A classic now is I'm reading, uh, listening to Diary of a CEO and I'm listening to Artificial Intelligence. He, he was the head of Google's research and development. And it's like, oh, yeah, boy, <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty frightening stuff, but it's pretty exciting stuff at the same time. And uh, and what is that, what has that got to do with investment and all the rest of it? Property investment, probably absolutely nothing. But I tell you what, it, it expands your knowledge and your information a lot more, and it and it, it gets you used to learning uh, all the time. There I go again. Eh? Um, mm -hmm. It gets you used to learning all the time um, and becoming a student of everything. Uh, so it's not just a case of, yeah, okay, I've heard this before. Yeah, okay, have you heard this before? Have you actually done anything about it though? <laughs> if the answer to if the answer is no, then you need to get your finger out and actually do something about it. So we're going to talk about this. Empty promises. Sorry, Richard. I thought I'd no, no, you're fine. You're, you're absolutely right, Jim. I think I think it's really important to be that person that questions everything and asks these why things are why things are. And and like I say, if, um, we're using terminology and things today that maybe some people doesn't don't understand if it's referring to buy to let or property investment. Then question it. Say, what does that mean? What does that word mean? And and like you say, the word void. Yeah. We're talking about that period in between tenancies when a property is empty. Uh, but an empty pro an empty property doesn't always need to be a downer. I mean, people look at a void period as something that they really want to avoid. Um, but of course, it can, in fact, have some time in between tenancies to give you that chance to really optimise your investment. And now, more than ever, I think for a long time, we've, we were using that period to review the rent because obviously rental freezes and things that they yeah. are, are in place. So it's a brilliant time to reevaluate your rental uh, value and look at the yield you could be getting, look at your improvements you could do to improve the sale value and um, and really improve the property to enhance its future popularity with, with potential tenants and things as well. However, that being said, vacant homes do have some risks that come with it uh, yeah. and uh, extra management that needs to be done when there's not a tenant there. Uh, and you do need to think about um, that you don't need to think about, sorry, when you've got a, a, a tenant in place. No, what I'm amazed about most of the time is where a lot of uh, landlords actually have letting agents doing work for them, uh, actually assume that the letting agent um, is is looking after the property when it's vacant. It's like, uh, and what world do you think anybody should be doing any work for nothing? Yeah. And then uh, they say, well, but I gave you all these management fees. Okay, but that was for when the property was being managed by a tenant, isn't it? You know, I, I don't come back to you and say, well, I made a huge loss on your property last year. I want more money, do I? Yeah. And I think if you've got 
you've got a really good agent and they're, they're so eager to help and will and and want to sort everything out for you and um, they then get themselves in a position where it's in between tenancies they're actually not getting paid but they're still doing stuff for you and if, then they feel obligated and you've got that expectation and that's the scenario that you, you need to find out. It's like, how are yeah. you not doing that for me again? It's like, well, we weren't meant to do that in the first place. Yeah. You know, a letting agent is only to look after the property when it's actually filled and actually fill the property as well. And that's how they get their initial fee because that's what they're doing in the work to fill it and all the work they've done before it. Mm. Um, but when it sits empty, you've got to make sure that you're either paying the letting agent um, for, for doing that work in between or or you're actually doing it, uh, or you're doing it for yourself. You just realise that, you know, somebody's got to pay for it somehow. Yeah. So this is this is actually quite important, maybe project management or something like that. When you have a property empty, as you said, why you should be doing certain things in between, um, just just before it gets uh, before it gets filled. And I, I'm a great fan of this. I've done this recently because I've moved mine from. Well, look at look at um, one eight three, one eight three. Yeah. How much rent was it before? A uh, four fifty. If that was it four how four much rent four fifty. Is it now? Uh, six. 650 we're getting 650 yeah 650 i think it is. so 200 quid a month it's gone up yeah and, i mean granted you've just paid a lot of money on it <laughs> aye, but I, I, I hold it hold it hold it let's get the calculator out let's get the calculator out. 200 yeah. quid a month it's gone up in, in red so that's 2400 a year i've yeah. spent twenty two thousand on it um so 2400 yeah i mean it's it's obviously nearly enough for 10 percent divided by twenty two thousand. Uh, so my return on investment for that two, extra 2,400 is 11%. That's good. What are you getting in a bank? Sorry? Uh, plus the fact it's actually increased the value of the property. Uh, and if yeah. I really wanted to do, and I don't do this um, very often, if I really wanted to do, I could actually remortgage the property, actually get all that money back out, and then go and reinvest it in something else. And I'd yeah. still make that return on it. And it'd be an infinite return. Because yeah. I originally bought it for, I can't remember, yeah, quite. Uh, you you just talk among talk among yeah, yourself. Yeah, well, that's a good. I look up and tell you how much I originally bought this one for. Yeah, no, that's a good thing to bring up, Jim, because again, the the period in between tenancies and things is a good time where you could make improvements and things, and then you could look at refinancing and releasing uh, funds to then future um, investment and things as well. So what are you laughing? At? I originally bought it for twenty five thousand. Oh God! <laughs> well, I've actually paid is just as much on the refurb as of. Um, no, sorry, no, that one. That was a different one. That's another one. The other one I just mm -hmm. did is a refurb. I, 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 I let me just uh, recap. I actually think it's. Uh, I think I've got a funny feeling it's a lot less. Um, do, 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 do. So like, you spent more on the refurb than you did on the original purchase. <laughs> I possibly did actually. Uh, oh, I bought it for twenty thousand. Well, yeah, I spent more on the refurb than I actually originally bought it for. Uh, and I'm getting six fifty a month now. So when you look at it like that, it's like you know, there's a really good return in, in property investment. Yeah, yeah. But hey, try and convince me that property is going to crash, and you know we're not going to make any money, and, and and it's not a good return. And it's like, yeah, okay, I will just probably fall on deaf ears. Uh, however, I always say if you could find something that makes more money than what we're doing right now, tell me about that as well, and invest that as well. Yeah. I think that the important thing as well is that your portfolio Jim whether the market goes up or down the sales market and property values it doesn't really have an effect on you because your main concern is cash flow and that's what we're going to talk about on Monday again we're going to talk about that on Monday um on the wealth creation show and that's yeah, the most only, important. only reason only reason um uh, I, you know I know there's a lot of questions coming through on TikTok about just exactly what I said you'll have to hang on to the end because we are doing our blog for this purpose hence the reason why I showed you the live broadcast going on right now uh, and when, once we get over that in the next uh, 45 minutes, I would say, uh, I will mm -hmm. come back to questions that were asked. Uh, unfortunately, TikTok disappears. So um, so you'll never get to see this on a rerun on TikTok. If you do want to see it on uh, YouTube, um, it will be there permanently on Five Properties TV uh, on the YouTube channel. And it will be in the um, Saturday morning show playlist. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but all, yeah, live broadcast, all live broadcasts. These are all live. We don't do any pre-recorded stuff. Uh, we, or we don't pretend to do pre-recorded and stream as live yeah. okay so, richard over to you so, so yeah so that does mean that uh, your empty buy to let uh, comes up with opportunities um and organization opportunities as well uh, mm -hmm. plus there, there is a varied menu of things to consider and that's maybe even spicing up the specification or uh, rooting out repairs that need done um presenting it with a fresh face uh, blitzing through your admin 
uh, that maybe maybe that's been neglected a wee bit if you, while your tenant's been in place or you need to refresh on your certificates at that point it's a good point the time to maybe look at your eicr i mean if your eicr is coming up and it's due for renewal um fairly soon do it now rather than wait to the tenants then because you don't know eicr's uh, eicr's by the way are electrical installation condition reports your electrical safety but there's been a lot of changes with that as well uh, and ultimately protecting your property epcs as well EPCs as well. EPCs is a golden opportunity, especially, you know, the legislation I take it in Scotland that's still in place for 2025 for all new tenancies and onwards. uh, At the moment, 2028 from every existing tenancy and onwards. Yeah. At the moment, that's all still in place to go ahead. 2025. England's England's having a rethink, by the way. They're actually actually really seriously considering putting on the back burner. The government said that already. Uh, But I've I've no doubt that the idiot, as so called, aka Patrick Harvey, will, um, the self proclaimed idiot, and fool he could be you know what i mean he could be the fool he could be the fool to the snp isn't he like the wee court jester <laughs> <laughs> you can see him dancing about with his wee yeah. egg and his wee heart on <laughs> it's funny you say about the apcs jim and 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 like you say obviously england are reconsidering that might have a knock-on effect and we might actually follow suit and and we'll look oh, at that as well no never never I've got, you've, um, got that. you've got that nutter in charge yet you know, there's no way he's going to want to change that. He's just completely doesn't matter what anybody else says. It's what he thinks it could work and, and, and to hell with the consequences. That's the type of person we've got in Patrick Harvey. Well, I have, um, I've got the row of cottages up at the farm on Kalesi. I was up there yesterday, actually. And they've just done a refurb on one of them. Complete refurb, new windows, new heating system, uh, new, double, new radiators in each room and uh, everything. Uh, obviously, they can't do carpet to wall and things. Their original yeah. EPC is F, which is still in and it's still in date, but we're having it renewed. So it'll be interesting to see what that comes up at. Because how are you ever going to get a property like that up to a C, okay. even well, with all these improvements? If it comes up as D, now England apparently has. If it's anything more than three thousand five hundred pounds to try and get it up another level, yep. uh, it, it's prohibitive. Therefore, it doesn't need to be done. And it can still yeah. be rented. Yeah, I know there's thresholds. Scotland, yeah. I doesn't. I don't think that exists. But there is a, a get out of jail card. Um, that's not really the appropriate expression for landlords. Mm-hmm. But maybe it's in Patrick <laughs> yeah. Harvey's terms. Um, oh, actually, is it not going to be a criminal offence? <laughs> yeah, <but laughs> if you possibly. Don't, if you don't increase must... your EPC. Yeah, it is a criminal offence. Apparently, I really? I'm ready to go to jail. Put the handcuffs on me now <laughs> to make a political point. Um, <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah, um, in Scotland, this is what happens if it's going to be prohibitive. And for example, uh, let me give you an example of an energy performance certificate. If my energy performance certificate is, say, D, for example, um, and that's as far as I can get it, and it's really on the cusp of changing over a C by the one point, mm-hmm. I think it's between 77 and 78, um, it changes over yeah. a C. Yeah. Um, it's, and, and the only thing I could do is in cavity wall insulation, and it's a flat and the rest of the neighbours decide that they don't want they don't want it, mm-hmm. then then that's okay, that's yeah. possible. That's possible to be used as a D and still continue to let it, because there's no way I'm going to get it. Because in order to get cavity wall insulation in a, an apartment or a flat, you have to get the other people in the block to agree to it. And the reason for that is because obviously the cavity goes right through all the other flats. Yeah. So, yeah. so you have to get upstairs, downstairs. What they do is they put drips in between, which is which are barriers. They drop them down the cavity to stop it going into the other properties next door to it. But mm-hmm. you have to get up down, up and downstairs to agree um, to, to to it. So upstairs can't get it done on its own because there's no way you could put a drip in between to stop it going down to downstairs. Um, and downstairs can't get done on its own because then you obviously have to put it in so it will end up going up to upstairs. So you have to get both in that property. So if one of them uh, refuses to do it and, and they're not bound by any legislation, then there's no nothing, nothing you can do about that. So that's not your fault that you've not got managed to get the sea because of that. So I believe under the legislation in Scotland, you'll be still be able to continue to rent it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like like we say, we'll see how how that pans out. I think there'll definitely be some sort of changes that come in in, in the penalty yeah. force from that. Let's get but, um, yeah, so. let's get on and look at um, let's look at obviously spicing up the specification. We we spoke about that, and I think we know all too well recently, Jim, that we've used that opportunity with your portfolio and a lot of them. Um, yeah. And and it is always worth re- reviewing your property's appeal 
to attract the highest calibre tenants. We've definitely seen that coming through uh, by adapting and changing uh, the expectations. Um, and your investment will continue to give you a sustainable, profitable return. And, and we have demonstrated that numerous times over the last a couple of years since we started renovating a lot of years, Jim, that have, yeah. have never, I mean, we've done full refurbs. I mean, you can just obviously do certain things in between tenancies. We've just obviously used this opportunity because it's that time and you, the life of your portfolio for us to really get in there and think, right, do you know what, let's turn these around. Um, but I mean, look at the benefits we've had. Increased rent, so much better tenants in some places that we we never expected we would get. Um, and, and that all makes for such... <laughs> You're actually that that right there because I'm like, yeah. I've questioned it. I'm like, really? They're going to yeah. live in this house? Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> can I just double check? It's not the house, it's the area. But, no, but uh, 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 can I just double check about the circumstances? Uh, yeah, okay, they're, they are professionals, they are, you know, all the rest of it, and they are earning that amount of money. Yeah. And okay, they're going to stay in there. Yep, yeah, okay. That's okay. Well, fine. So nothing now surprises me. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of what you can do in this current market, um, in terms, but but it's really you've got to put a huge investment in to get that. But it's a it's yeah. a long term thing. It's a long term coming for some of these properties. So this is an opportunity to do it and get a better quality tenant, as you said. That's what it's all about. Definitely. What's important as well is I think that you've always had um, a blueprint, as I'll say, for how you have set up your your properties with um, the kitchen layout and and you know things that you've incorporated in that. And we've stuck to that, but we've kind of brought it up to to um, up to speed, modernised it in terms of do you know we've swapped out tiles for wet wall and um, yeah. the colour of the carpets and the and the colour of the paint. Do you know what I mean to fit with what uh, is on trend? So that's important as well, and that's that's a key factor in attracting the right people. Yeah, absolutely, I would say so. And um, so what the, so what's the type of things we've got to do then? Yeah, so, so I mean nuts and bolts. Yeah, say goodbye to the mixer taps and the leaky shower hoses and yeah. uh, fluctuating water temperatures uh, from fittings, uh, from fitting a powerful thermostatic shower and provide modern and a uh, civilized uh, and provide a modern yeah. and civilized experience. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Dishwashers, um, add a dishwasher if, there's, if, if there isn't one, a slimline one in some of the properties if you can. Yeah. Um, depending on what the size, I mean, if it, you didn't put a six hundred in if it's a if it's a one bedroom property. You no. you put a four hundred sunlight in, and and yeah. that can add a bit of value to it. I mean, you are responsible for a fixture, but suddenly dishwashers are a couple hundred quid, um, to put in. And and if you don't yeah, put them in, they the cabinet. They can just be freestanding, so they can come easily in and out whenever you need to change them. But it will add, will add significant value. I've just explained to everybody there right now, the two hundred pound increase increase in income every mm -hmm. single month has been offset by you know a twenty two thousand investment, and that's a mm -hmm. an eleven percent return. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a good that's a good return as far as i'm concerned yeah i think that the thing with dishwashers not as well they used to be looked at as a luxury item and now yeah. they're kind of they're more of an expectation now i had this conversation through the week with somebody it gives um, me a bit of worry though it, you know just on an environmental um, um, prospect i mean it gives me a bit of worry about the fact that we're continually putting dishwasher tablets into water and uh, yeah. and that, that's going straight into the into the water supply and it's like how are they removing that <laughs> and are, are, is, it, is, it, is it the case that's going into the sea and then we are ingesting it again? It's like, you know, that worries me. It worries me. Definitely. The thing is, I always, uh, I, I never really thought of it like that because I always thought dishwashers are better because they, they use less water than you do doing normal, uh, normal washing up. So, anyway. Yeah, I, I know, I know, but it, it does concern me. And, and a lot of people actually don't fill their dishwasher to the maximum capacity, so they're not using it as, as efficiently as it should be used. Yeah, um, that's another thing as well. So while you can have the energy efficient appliance, if it's not used properly, you're not going to get the full benefit out of it. Um, oh, I think as well, consider um, fitted wardrobes for space efficiency um, yeah. stylish and serene bedrooms. Uh, floor to ceiling designs swallow uh, more than freestanding pieces and avoid the messy piles of stuff on top of the cabinets. Yeah. You know what you see all the time? You know, you, because you, if you've got a floor to ceiling wardrobe and it's all integrated, you can just put everything up on the shelf, close the doors, and it just looks a lot more better finished off. Storage yeah. is such a big thing when people are looking at properties, and it's oh, what and absolutely, especially some of the, especially well, because everybody's bringing their stuff with them, don't they? Yeah, we used to, we used to have, I used to do furnished properties years and years ago, and and it was fine, and it catered to a right market, and I had a ninety nine percent 
almost 100% occupancy all the time with that. Um, so I was always occupied and everybody referred me as well because it was people that genuinely needed furnished properties. But but when the lucrative tax allowances got taken away and 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 it, and, and, and it didn't make as much sense uh, on a return basis, I then pivoted to the, you know, no, it's just carpets, uh, carpets, um, fitted kitchen, integrated oven hob extractor, job done. That's yeah. that's literally it. That's what I get down to now because there's no requirement to do anything other than that. And that's what everybody needs because they bring all their stuff with them. Plus the mm -hmm. fact they didn't encourage a transient population. It yeah. made a property more eco-friendly as well, I would say, and, and cheaper to run with the measures like, uh, you know, ceiling drafts and windows and doors and um, upgrading insulation and in uh, installing room thermostats. That's yeah. a, that's upgrade you do in between. Yeah. So the upgrade we've done in between is it's been, you know, oh, you can get away with the radiators you're using just now. But, you know, if you move them to the new type radiators, it's just more energy efficient. They're no longer painted. So therefore, they're, they're pumping more heat. They've got, yeah. they've got valves on all the on all the, the ends of them. So they cut off easier um, for the temperatures in the room. So it makes it nice and cozy for people. And I thought, you know, for the price of it, I think 100 quid a radiator or something like that, or 150 a radiator, I OK then, go on. Because yeah. the radiators will last forever. And the, you know, there's no way that anything harms them unless somebody paints them or, or you know, destroys them. Yeah. But they're, yeah. radiators are really robust. So you may as well change them. And it gives the right impression when you walk in. Imagine decorating your whole house and carpeting your whole house and you come in and you've I got these it. shitty radiators. On the wall. radiators yeah. <laughs> Aye. Oh, the, the wee thin double double radiators. And, and they've got the, the uh, you know, even some of the antiquated uh, central heating systems are still running once in a blue moon, where they've got the, the two returns into the one valve on the radiator mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. And, and there's no thermostat on it either. So therefore, completely inefficient. And you spend all that money on everything else. And you're going to get nailed to the wall because when 2025 comes along and somebody moves out, you're screwed because you're mm -hmm. going to have to change all that, uh, that stuff again. So do it now while you've got the property empty and you could do it all at once and just give it a full refurb and upgrade the energy efficiency and upgrade the property itself and then also upgrade the EICR at the same time because it's a lot of disruption. Yeah, definitely. Because when you come to 2025, 2028, you're going to be forced to do anyway. You're going to have to disrupt the property to get some of these things done. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Definitely use that opportunity when you've got the time to do it, uh, do what you need to do. Also, I mean, like like the uh, we spoke about the, the changes that we've done, use that, get that design, think about the designer edge and, and make the improvements so the property is on trend uh, and that's like the aesthetic upgrades and that's carpets and uh, like I say, we swapped out tiles for wet wall and things now and uh, that's what everybody looks for and, and there is an expectation for that as well. And uh, like you say, Jim, radiators, you know, change them out for the maybe sleeker contemporary ones. Or I mean, they don't have to be anything fancy, to be honest, as long as they're the newer style double radiators. I'm not a big fan of uh, black. <laughs> you know, people have the black yeah. fittings. Black. I know it's been done on some of our properties recently, and it's like yeah. it's like it looks wonderful right now. But I just have I know in the next five years it'll look pretty dated and 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 out of fashion. So I'm not yeah. a big fashion uh, fashion statement person. I prefer the chrome because chrome is timeless. It's always going yeah. to be here. So chrome and all these different colours um, are, 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 are here to stay forever. So that I'm a big fan of that because remember, it's an investment. It's not a it's not a designer statement. It's not a reflection of your personality. It's for somebody it's to live not. in and put their own blank canvas state. So blank canvas, and then they could put their own statement with their yeah. accessorising in it. I think there's colour palettes and, and like you say, the chrome and things, these could all still look on trend, but st yeah. still stand the test of time. Do you know, there, there, there's certain things Absolutely. you can stick with. Uh, and, and the black fittings, they are really on trend now. Will they be in five years? We'll see. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I could, see that. I could see them being, you know, it's like the pompous greener bathrooms. Um, <laughs> yeah. Kind of yeah, like with the gum. Yeah. They just, you know, they'll, they'll be fine uh, on a sh in, in a medium term, short term, medium basis. But I can't see them lasting through um, the next twenty years like Chrome does. There's nothing better than Chrome. It's sparkle. It's bright. Yeah. It's easy to clean. Um, why would you not continue to use that? Just make sure you've got a neutral tap, so you don't yeah. put anything like you know marble effect tap 
um, or anything like that. So you can, you, I mean, you could change covers anyway on taps. But some taps are actually quite unique. You can't change the cover unless you get that certain type. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the things you've got to watch out for. That you know. So it's you can have poetic license as if you, oh, I love my design. I really want it to be a landlord so I can design properties and and and, and it's like no. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's be a flip person you know be a landlord be a flip person because that is not what a landlord is yeah yeah definitely so there can be pitfalls and things to watch out for and um obviously if you've been listening you'll see that um we obviously do that uh, regularly so if, if there's anything that you're maybe not sure of and you want to touch base and think should i do this maybe what to watch out for feel free to come to me um, I'm sure my contact details, my number, and my email are in the, the yeah. blog attached. So this is time. To do, this is time to do repairs as well. So root yeah. out all the repairs that you wanted to do. The wear and tear um, gradually takes its toll with every property, as you've have you seen, Richard, firsthand. Yeah, and the sure little does. things can go unnoticed over the years. But no tenant wants to live in a broken down rental home. Um, so one uh, wander around yours, okay, mm -hmm. to see what needs fixing. I always say to myself. If you wouldn't stay in it yourself, then you do, you shouldn't be expecting a tenant to stay in it. Yeah. So it has to be done to sort of your standard where you think, yeah, I would live in that. Sarah Binney used to talk about that a lot. If you don't love your house or your rental property or your investment property or your second home or anything like that, how do you expect anybody else to love it? Yeah. So Definitely. look around the outside for anything like slip roof tiles, slates, Cog gutters is a good one. You know, yeah. are often left to the last minute. Folk didn't bother about it. Maybe crack down pipes and block drains that have happened over the years because they don't have the proper um, mesh on the top of the, the gutter. So therefore mm -hmm. all the weeds go down and actually block the whole thing up. And then the water back flushes right up, the, right up and then it goes right to the top of the gutter and then it flows right under your cavity and goes right down the cavity wall and everybody goes, I've got damp! And it's like, no, you've not got damp. Yeah, it's yes. the fact that you've, you've, your, your outside uh, downpipe's actually blocked and that's what's causing the problem. Uh, you know, that's so these are the things you've got to check and make sure. And also cracks at the back of your downpipe as well, which can seep into the wall, but you mm -hmm. actually don't know. The telltale sign is you see a lot of moss around the downpipe yeah. or you see a lot of moss around the a, a, a bit on the wall, it's maybe where a joint is in one of your gutters. You know then uh, that that's needing to be fixed. It doesn't mean to say you've got to fix the, all the gutters and haul everything off and start again. It just means it needs to be sealed, especially if you've got the OJ guards, which is the old cast iron stuff. Yeah. It's like plumbing, it's like a bloody Sherman tank. It's, <laughs> it's like with this stuff, it sits on the wood board and sits on the top of the the actual um, the, the the wall itself, the cavity, uh, just under the under the roof. And uh, these often go in the middle. And in order to try and fix them, if you take one out, it disrupts all the rest. So you're better actually just to put a proper seal in between. Um, internal doors, windows? That, yeah. Is that a thing yeah. you should be checking, Richard? Yeah, I think it was good that you started with the exterior of the property, yeah. Jim. Because a lot of people concentrate on inside and forget about outside. So mm. have a proper look around outside. But look inside at my, is important. Look at my photos. And then, <laughs> then you go look at the photos of the outside and you go, God's sake, the garden's minging. Ah, there's water running down the outside, and yeah, that's the and all the money you've spent inside is going to end up being ruined. Oh, it's just a waste. Yeah. It's going yeah. to get damaged. Yeah, but inside is important, and obviously, go around, check your doors, check your door handles, check your windows, open them, close them, uh, lock things, unlock them, uh, make sure keys turn, uh, and the front door and the back door, and do you know, what? actually walk around and actually try all these things yourself, because when yeah. your tenant moves in, that's exactly what they're going to do. And through time, they're going to pick up on things that she could have already picked up on. Uh, it's a good point. We had a hand back from a property, um, pro supposed, supposed project manager. Um, Yo, oh, your property is ready to go. There you go. And then I walked round and I did that same walkthrough, like you said, and tested mm -hmm. everything and checked everything and thought like the tenant and thought, where's the manual for that boiler? Where is it? How does this work? Um, how do I switch that on? Where's the instructions for this? And where is it for that? And when that drawer opens, does it actually miss the, the oven handle? All these different things. And then when that wardrobe opens, does it slide properly? Or does it actually, do you struggle to get the thing open? Um, does the door stuck on the carpet? Yeah, yeah does this, because ah, new carpets go down, sometimes they put underlay in, um, and then it's therefore the door has to be shaved in order for it to do it. Or, or yeah. my door 
and open properly. So when they go to move their furniture in, they're never going to get anything in unless they take the door off the hat. That's not a great start to the property, to, to the person's journey when they move in. They want to move in something that's ready to go. After yeah. all, that's what they've paid for. And and the and by doing this, you really give them a brand new car with a dent in it. Yeah. And if you do all that, it, it, it might not eliminate, but it will it will drastically reduce all the teething issues. Because, uh, yeah. I mean, when a tenant moves in, you don't want a big long list of, oh, well, this, 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 um, when it could have all been prevented. Yeah. Imagine getting a brand new car and got a dent in it and the boy goes, tram it like. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but that's what, that's what some landlords are like. Very few, but that's what some landlords and letting agents are like. What's wrong with it? Nothing wrong with it. Just a bit of dirt. Right, yeah. But I didn't expect to have to clean the property when I move in. It's supposed to be done before I get there. Yeah. And, and also, unless, I, unless that's prior, uh, let me just assure you, unless that's yeah. priorly agreed, because some people, some landlords actually say, look, no deposit. So, because mm -hmm. you can't afford it for certain tenancies, no deposit, but you decorate, you clean, you do everything. And I've got it window you water it safe and all the rest of it, all the certificates, but you treat it as your own. Uh, I say, AKA the council. Yeah. yeah <laughs> that's yeah, effectively yeah, what the council yeah. does, doesn't it? The castigate the private landlords, and yet that's what the council does. Hey, it looks like a shithole. It's like, that's a council property you're getting. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, I've got to be I've got to be straight up because it's true. I know, I know. I'm just thinking sort of the moment, but anyway. And that's <laughs> what some of these properties look like at the gate for the council and even yeah. the housing associations, and they're guilty as charged, but they'll they'll hold themselves it would be whiter than white. And they're not at all. It's like private landlords give a lot more than what anybody else gets in the social renting sector. But but that's why that's why we get a better return. Obviously, we're financing the the finance cost as well, where the social landlords don't, therefore they're able to afford a lower rent for the for the tenant, uh, and and you know so it's different things to different criteria, but um, you know it's the pot calling the kettle black sometimes when the government points their finger. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and I think also if if you are a landlord who's providing a property that has curtains and blinds and and window coverings and window. Uh, treatments you need to check all these as well open and shut the curtains make sure the, the the curtain poles steady make sure the blinds aren't broken and they close and they and they pull up and go, and go down again you know, try all these things as well if you're providing them and they're not up to uh, or they're not fit for purpose you will have the tenant on the phone and you'll have to replace them anyway so just do it before like the blind that goes the blind that goes halfway up and it gets <laughs> yeah. the, wee, the wee bubble gets stuck in the end <laughs> <laughs> and it's yeah. like, oh, you're gonna have to take that off and turn it all the way around to get that to coincide so it goes up properly to the to the full thing. These are the small intricacies or whatever it is that in the small details, here's a better word, eh? details. Yeah. The small details that you need to get right in order to get the tenancy off for a for a good start. You're absolutely right. Some of these might seem really minor, as I said, but the comedy, but the comedy of a wobbly door in the handle coming off. Uh, and and the, the the hand of a potential tenant, um, and the hand of a potential tenant can soon turn into the doubts about what else might fall apart when I actually move in. Yeah, it sets the tone, I think, really. Yeah. What would you pay more money for then? What would you pay more money for as a tenant? Well, I think I think um, a home that feels fresh. I mean, like we said, put a fresh face on it. A home that feels fresh, one that doesn't feel stale. You don't walk in and have you know to walk in and smell. New, I mean, you're not necessarily doing a, a complete refund, but to walk in and smell new carpets and new freshly painted things is so much better than a, than a horrible stale kind of smell to walk in a property. Of course, yeah. I mean, that's a rhetorical question. Would you rather walk into a, a, a fresh property or a stale one? I mean, we know the answer. Um, yeah. So let's look at how... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's look at how uh, the best ways are to, to breathe uh, life into a property. Um, and I think go around and inspect on the edges of carpets and behind the doors um, and look for dust build up and, and have them all professionally cleaned if need be. Mm -hmm. You don't want a stale, dusty, like old smell when somebody moves into a property when it could be avoided. Um, yeah. Cast your eye over all the walls, the skipping boards, the window frames, the door frames. Look for scuffs and, I mean, ultimately, or inevitably, should I say, there will be scuffs and things. and. And maybe they're fine for the next tenancy if they're just minor. But if there's quite a lot, then a quick lick of paint or a wipe down. If you're, looking for a, if you're looking for a premium rent, 
if you're looking for a premium rent for your property yeah. in the current market, how it is, and you just take a bit of paint, like if, say you've got a magnolia wall and it's been magnolia for the last three years, but it's still, it's, but it's got a mark on it and you take a bit of magnolia and just paint over it and go, that'll do. And it's like, you're not getting your premium rent because no. because that shows up straight away. Because, you know, you know yourself, it's like putting a picture on the wall. You take the picture away after about 10 years and then you've got a mark where the picture was. Yeah. And, and that's effectively what you're, what you're doing. So, you know, for the for the price of the lick of paint, it's it's worth it to get the premium rent because the tenants in there now, and most tenants will stay on average about three to four years now, won't they? Yeah. Also, in areas like the kitchen and the bathroom, and we've oh God, that's heard, a we, yeah, 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 definitely. I was just going to say, and, and every landlord, I'll know about bathroom or bath seals, shower seals, seals around uh, tiles and things as well, whether that be in the, the kitchen or the bathroom. Um, and the peeling paint above shower uh, areas and and uh, potentially mold and things above showering areas and cooking areas and things where there is um, a continual uh, a lot of maybe steam for the shower and things as well. Yeah. Look at these areas. Make sure they're properly ventilated. Do you have do you have a, a proper uh, extractor? Is it working? Is there a window there? Is it being opened? Um, have you the right paint there? in the first place as well? Yeah. Because it's like, you know, a lot of people still use matte, matte emulsion on a ceiling in a bathroom rather than silk, vinyl mm -hmm. silk. And vinyl silk is what you're supposed to be using every single time. So you can wipe it down. It's inevitable it's going to get the wee black spots every now and again. But if you've got matte emulsion, it's stuck there. You're going to have to paint over it again. And you're going to have to put it in the mirror. Yeah. Right. If, you've got, if you've got vinyl silk on there, it's like, oh, wipe it down. Easy. It's a seal for the proper thing. And especially in kitchens as well, vinyl silks are really good, uh, a good one as well. So these are, I mean, these are just normal tips, but I tell you what, when you compound all these things together, it sets the right tone for the property and, yeah. and gives you the right results. Now, let's be honest, this, the landlord profession has been hugely um, professionalised. A lot more yeah. professional from when I first started. Because when I first started, you were walking in and you were looking at other people's properties that you were maybe taking a tenant from, and like the you know, the lime scale over the over the bathroom, can over the over the shower cubicle, and then you had all the grout, all the horrible and black and everything like that. And you know, it wasn't it mostly the tenants. It's like they had just got this thing. Yeah, and but it seems changed. It's even professionalised a lot. Anybody I love there. It's even changed a lot since when I started, Jim. Um, do you know things have come around quite a lot even in the last 10 years or so as well it's more professionalised I think that's what yeah. the great thing about it is um, with the advent everything's going on it's nothing to do with the legislation or anything like that it's everything to do with the type of person the quality of person actually investing in the private renting sector yeah. now it's mainly a lot of professional people um, and they are in it for the long term it's not a short term gain for them so they're quite happy to put a huge amount of capital in this and a consistent basis and um, spend a lot of, of their income that they bring in on on constantly keeping the property up up, up, up to, to, the, to the standard that is because they realize the main focus of it is more or less the capital appreciation over over the long term is yeah. going to be where it is you know some people like myself have obviously geared and built uh, deliberately for huge amounts of income and margins to be made um, and that's fine. You can structure your properties like that, but also you get the capital gain as well. Uh, and, yeah. and you know, Australia, for example, most people in Australia at rent, private rent a property at, you know, as landlords, um, they actually expect just to make their money in the capital gain. They, they yeah. don't expect Definitely, some actually yeah. to take a wee bit of a hit um, year to year and a loss. And um, because, but the capital gain is so immense in Australia. Yeah, that doesn't matter then because they know they what they are. Yeah, so they're happy to do that and offset it. But yeah, I've noticed that landlords and investors, uh, they take a lot more pride in, in the, the type of the property that they're presenting to tenants yeah. and things now. And you, and you really kind of beat uh, the feeling of a, a crisp and clean property, um, as well as it adding value um, and a sense of newness that attracts the, the best tenants and gives them confidence and, and you buy to let property. Uh, and, and it makes them want to live in it. And that's ultimately what you want. Yeah, okay. Um, oh, admin. <laughs> now, I, I, I kind of like admin. 
I like yeah. the admin side. I, I I don't like the day to day admin, but I like I like the year end accounts and that because I'm an accountant. Very early. Things, yeah. I like looking at the numbers. I like the KPIs, and that right really is part of admin. But you, we're talking about the nuts and bolts. And you know what are the nuts and bolts of the admin that you need to know about, Richard? Yeah, I, I think as soon as your your rental property becomes vacant, uh, the daily welfare and all the bills and things do switch back to you as the owner. Uh, yeah. So there is there is a checklist that you really need to follow uh, uh, to avoid the unwanted surprises. And the, the yeah. one that's right up there, and any landlord or investor or letting agent that's watching will agree, is the utilities. And ideally, you should be putting the utilities, like the gas and the electricity and things, and back into your name. Um, and that avoids a lot of issues with um, the former tenant, the former tenant's liability, and then obviously. Um, uh, then passing it on to the new tenant as well. That mm -hmm. doesn't always happen like that, and letting agents, especially the in between period, utilities can be a challenge. But if done correctly, they can they can be sort of. Jeez, the utility companies. It's no it's no the fault of the letting agent or the landlord. It's everything to do with the utility companies. I mean, yeah. even even we're talking about the council tax. You know, but yeah. uh, give them the, the the tenants forwarding address, the move out day, yeah. and uh, where to send the bill for the period the property is empty as well. But, mm -hmm. but God, they, 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 sometimes they didn't even pick it up. And I'm like, wait a minute, you've sent me a council tax bill for this, but we sent you almost a month and a half ago, and I've got the email here going yeah. to you, and you've acknowledged it, and it's been opened. Um, that um, we had actually, somebody else had moved out, and the property was in, empty and unoccupied, and there should be an exemption period in between for that time. So why on earth have you still issued me a bill? Why? We you know, did that I, a few times recently. I'm and luckily, and I just, I just, I just like, oh my god, I'd love to get my hands on the council tax system and actually yeah. refine it and improve it in the in the local authority because because it frustrates me um, when I see things like that happening and, and it's a it's a, a month and a half out of day. And it's mm -hmm. like, how could you lose that information and forget that information if so many people are actually putting all that information in? But yeah, I mean, we, we luckily have the system where, and I mean, if you've got, you, if you're using an related agent, they should as well. Our system shows when they open it and when it was sent and all the rest of it. So, yeah. uh, and we've had it recently, they've still come back to us. So, yeah, that's yeah. one thing as well, Jim, definitely. Buildings, contents, and insurance is another one as well you've got to think about. Now, the property is covered mm -hmm. uh, to make sure your property is actually covered while it's vacant. I mean, many providers automatically drop their cover for unoccupied homes um, after about 30 days. I think I've got 60 or 90 days cover. Yeah, um, and the reason I've got that is because I've got the right landlord policies. Now, if anybody wants to know what that landlord policy is, I'm more than happy to refer them to my provider. It is mm -hmm. HFIS, which is Hamilton Fraser um, Insurance yeah. Solutions. Um, and they're one of the biggest landlord insurers in Britain. Um, so they actually give a good rate. And I actually changed from Alan Boswell just last year. And I knocked a third off my insurance. And I still got the same cover. I thought they've Alan been really Boswell, good, but they've been really good recently. Yeah. I genuinely thought Alan Boswell was like really competitive, especially when mm -hmm. you compare against Halifax and all these fly by nights. I'm saying fly yeah. by nights, Halifax. <laughs> 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 all these, all these uh, uh, profit profiteers, I would say. Because yeah, I mean, you've got, the, you've got, let's be honest, the Halifax charges about double the price for landlord insurance as Alan Boswell and Hamilton Fraser charge. And normally it's sold as an extra when you get your mortgage for the buy to let from the Halifax yeah. or whoever it is. And people go, ah, I just give me it. And it's like, oh my God, you've just doubled your insurance costs. Yeah. Yeah. And yet you don't need to. And you've probably got less cover. Because they're not yeah, as good. I always, I always advise landlords, please look at what you're actually covered for. Because when it comes to the crunch, you might not, you might not have cover at all, depending on what the situation is. Yeah, so so I do introductions to um, Hamilton Fraser yeah. for that reason, um, and and it's only for the fact that I use them, and that's why I'm doing it uh, because I, I feel that people will get a better rate um, if we introduce them than actually going direct. Because if you go direct, like every insurer, why would they know? They'll give you the the quote for the the biggest value they can get away with. Uh, they don't have like, oh well, it's one pound twenty per thousand rebuild for everybody. No, 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 no. They've got you're just a person phoned off the street. <laughs> you're going <laughs> yeah. two pound per thousand rebuild. Yeah. Um, that's how that's how they do it. Um, so if you've got an introducer, it's it uses them all the time. They tend to give them a far better deal for introducing, and um, because they're putting a lot of business through them, and that's what yeah. that's what we're doing for that reason. But yeah, I'm endorsing them because I use them, 
and uh, and they are actually really really good. I've yeah. I've always been between Hamilton Fraser and Alan Boswell over the years, and I just flip every now and again because mm -hmm. I know um, they both do the same kind of insurance, but one gives a better rate than the other at this point in time. Plus, one's a better service at this point in time. They do get a bit complacent. So I make sure that uh, I'm I'm looked after uh, if anything goes wrong, and we we know that because we've had something recently happen. Yeah, and it was only really good. Good. there's a couple well, instances a week, a week after a week after changing Richard, and they're like, yeah. no bother, we'll pay that, and it's like twenty grand, and yeah. then I've got worth the rent as well, and I've, I've only had them for a week. Mm -hmm. Aye, they've been really good for that, I have to say. So, so I'm 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 really uh, I'm really enthused about using uh, insurers, yeah. the proper insurers. We've had yeah. a landlord as well that never had the proper insurance before, even though I advised them, and it ended up costing them, God, what did it cost them? About 25, 30,000 pounds. Uh, Is that the one with the... Yeah, Durwood Street. Yeah. Yeah. That was a long time ago. Mind you, it was in the papers. It's like mm -hmm. Christmas Day and the water's flooding in, and we couldn't do anything about it because that was the winter of discontent, more or less. I know it was the discontent. That's the 70s sort of thing. But it was the winter where nobody could come out for anything. Even the water board wouldn't come out. Nobody would come out because you couldn't even get a car on the road. So it was like, we'll just have to let the water pour in. How do you switch it off? Well, it's the main in the street. But if you switch the main on the street off, you'll switch it off for everybody else in the street. That's the only way it was done. So luckily, luckily... Um, he, well, luckily he wasn't, no, I wouldn't say luckily, <laughs> unfortunately he wasn't insured. Even though yeah, I'd said at the beginning, you need to have the right insurance and this is the reason why and gave him the leaflet and endorsed it and all the rest of it. And he just went, no, no, I'm going to be covered by insurers. As soon as they heard, oh, the person's on benefits, they went, oh, I don't think he's covered yeah. for that. That's but, what I was going to say, it's the, it's the benefit thing that, that scuppered it. And that's happened to more than one landlord over the years. Um, but yeah, I mean, insurance uh, and sorting out the proper insurance, notifying utilities, um, notifying the the local authority, it all might it all might seem a bit of a chore for you. But if you've got a good letting agent, they will notify your utility companies, your local authority, and things as well at the beginning and the end of tenancies and things as well. So it is always good to have a good letting agent in place if that all seems like too much of a chore for you to do because they are so important. What's the simple steps, especially when we're coming up to winter, because we will be coming up to. Let's be honest, winter's coming in. It is getting colder. I have actually pressed the heating button now and again <laughs> to, to heat the house. <laughs> no, I've done it yet, but it was cold this morning. No, I've, I've, had to, I've had to just to, the hour just to take the chill off. Yeah. Um, yeah. So while your vital it remains empty, there are some simple steps that you could surely take, Richard, um, um, to keep it inviting for viewers and also minimise the risk of damage and prevent intruders. What kind of things should we be thinking about? inviting viewers is a, that's a that's a good one that's a good point but um yeah program your heating to come on uh, even if it's just for an hour uh, to take the chill off like you said you're done with your own place Jill, uh, jim for a uh, showing a uh, tenants around oh, is really that's important. a weekend name nobody's supposed <laughs> to know that that's how I was reading. I was reading the word chill <laughs> i went to say jim at the same time that's how i done that <laughs> take the chill off um for showing tenants around and to avoid <laughs> freezing pipes and things as well. Through the winter, that's something you need to think about if the property is empty. Get my um, heels on and my skirt on, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a match to reach out and uh, Jim there at the same time. But um, yeah, your heating system, have it programmed. You also, your radiators do have the, the wee frost one you could set it on. Um, so if the temperature does drop and you're, you've got your combi system and things, it will kick in and run through just to stop them from uh, freezing yeah, off. Right. Appliances, turn off appliances that are not in use. Um, yeah. Leave the door of the fridge and the freezer and your washing machine and things open. Stop them going stale and having that horrible smell. Mm -hmm. um, I, and and mould as well build up. You see like the rim on the washing machine and things and round yeah. the seal of the fridge freezer. Switch, and, your, switch your water off definitely if you can. Yeah. And you do have a main that can switch the water off. Um, then do switch it off. Um, just in case. Uh, no, normally, most people now will have a sealed system for their heating, so therefore mm -hmm. that won't be affected as a result of that. But if you've still got a feeder tank um, into your, so you've got a system boiler and you've still got the old central heating, which is a feeder tank that feeds in, mm -hmm. then just be careful that feeder tank's got enough water in it to feed your central heating system in case it has to come on at periods when it is really cold. Because if it doesn't, uh, then it obviously runs out of the water it needs to fill the radiators, therefore the radiators aren't as effective as they should be. 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, and also making sure the property is secure. I mean, some people have alarms and things. If you have, have them set, make sure you lock everything up. Um, give clear instructions to your letting agent if they're, they're going to be going to the property. Um, alarm codes and things have been caught with that over the years. Um, if, if you've got an alarm set, provide the code and things for it as well for the agent. This is where, this um, is where it's quite good. If you're doing the refurb in between, someone is always there to look after it because there's yeah. been going in and out all the time. That's where it's actually quite beneficial rather than having it empty, just waiting for the next tenant. So that's that's when I say, you know, you can you can you can tick off a lot of things on your to do list. Um if you if you plan it properly on on what I would say critical path in yeah. terms of what needs to be done uh, next in order to get this done. Because at this point in time, you'll probably fill a property quite easily. I think we're taking 10 to 11 days on average to get our property let. Yeah. Um, now, that's let, not physically moved in. But mm -hmm. that's how long it's taken in Scotland, according to Zoopla. It's taking about 10 to 11 days to get that done. Uh, so, and, and I do think then, if that's the case, and they've got usually about what's it, about thirty days, maybe before somebody moves in, because sometimes they've got yeah. to give notice. Yeah. On their, they've got to give their twenty eight days and things. Yeah. So yeah, we've got to give twenty eight days somewhere else. So so that's the period of time where you've got that finite window of uh, effectively forty days at the most in order to turn this round and actually get it refurbed. Even think about when you're getting the job done. If you've got a clever letting agent, yes, we do this. <laughs> is actually go around and show people right now. The fact that it's getting refurbed. Yeah. Get camera, get a video walkthrough. This is getting refurbed. This is what's getting done. This is how it's gone so far. If you're looking for a property like this, get in touch with us now. It's going to come up for let soon, but you can actually get your name on the list now. And you could probably secure it now if you're in the right circumstances and ready to go um, and fit the timeline that we're going to finish this project. That means we're making the most valuable use of the occupancy rate. In other words, yeah. we're keeping occupancy rate really high because occupancy rate is based on the time, the time it could be filled versus the time it is filled. And the time it could be filled is less the time it's getting refurbed because there's no way you could actually have that filled unless it's just a light refurb and the tenant goes, yeah, I'm fine with that. Just yeah. you, you could bring a painter and decorator in to, fit it, to do it while I'm, while I'm working or whatever. You could also maybe fit the kitchen. If it's going to be two or three days, I'm quite happy for you to fit the kitchen in the two or three days that I'm in the property. That means your occupancy rate's kept actually quite high. So there is ways and means to do that and actually still maximise your rental income. Now, this is not about profiteering. The profit's not a dirty, dirty word. The whole point of this is actually to make sure you've got enough money to reinvest back in the property for when anything else happens. Yeah. Tenant falls in hard times. You've got a you, you've got a bit of scope there that you can maybe help them out in the short term. That's why you have to maximize the rent and maximize the profits. Yeah. So it helps everybody as a result. Yeah, definitely. And I think, like you say, Jim, they, they get in ahead of the game there um, with putting things, if you're doing a refurb and instead of waiting until it's actually complete and then putting it out there, yeah. you know what I mean? Get that out there and then you could, if, if, and we've done it with a few properties uh, recently and we've found somebody and started that process before it was even finished. So then, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? And it just it minimises that void period where you're not uh, receiving income and it, and it gets people moved quickly as well. Absolutely. Yeah, but uh, yeah, protecting your property and and like we say, the heating systems and appliances and making sure the property is secure. Having all these in place will give you a valuable peace of mind uh, on your buy to let, uh, and not just that um, your investment will look and feel uh, and uh, and and smell its best when we talk about that smell uh, that stale smell thing. But it also has everyone entering on the property um, will be happy when they get in there and. Um, and anybody that's going in will be authorised by you, whether that be your letting agent or the viewings that they're taking round or your contractors. Do you know you have a, a, a good handle on what's happening in the property? That's where a letting agent is quite important to actually take round and say, you know, what do you think? Do you think this is what I should be doing before you actually start that? And then also the other one, because you've seen this before, where a contractor's walked in the door, Richard, and you do this for me. A contractor mm -hmm. walks in the door and goes, oh, that's going to cost about 12000 and you've got to do this, that, and that, and that, and that. And then you go to the back of them and go, well, that's not actually needing done, and that's not needing done. 
and that's needed yeah. a lot lighter refurb than what you're saying. So you, literally, I'm wanting you to come back to me and base it on what that is. And then yeah. they've come back and gone, well, oh, right, okay, well, it's only about seven grand then. Yeah, I like, you know, uh, yeah. Obviously, I I do that for you, Jim. But I think other landlords and investors and things have been have become more uh, aware of that, and they've not just well, let's accept what the contractors tell me and do this. And they know that letting agents or a good letting agent will come in and advise them, like you don't need to do this, yeah. you don't need that, you do need this though, uh, you do need, or maybe you do need this, but it can be done a wee bit cheaper. Um, do you know it doesn't have to be so expensive? You could do it to a, a good standard at a less price, and do you know just mm -hmm. that those those kind of things that could save you. Um, a lot in the long run, uh, but still have a really nice property. So if you just if you just leave it to the advent of the contractor, the contractor will go, well, I just want to make the best job possible because that's their mindset. Mm -hmm. So in order to make the best job possible, in order to reflect the work that I do, because some contractors are almost like artists in terms of how they do yeah. things. It's not that they're trying to overcharge, they just do things at a different yeah, if level. You give them, if you give them poetic license to just do what they want, they're going to come back with the best of everything. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to go, did I really need luxury tiles? Did yeah. I really need luxury bathroom? Did I really need a luxury kitchen? Did I really need, you know, granite worktops? No. no. Um, but if you give them poetic license to do what they want, that, you know, subcontractors will just run riot. Um, I, oh, we've got plenty of time, so we'll just do this job and we'll just take a bit more. Oh, I could change that. I could change this. Because then it starts highlighting other things. But if you're not there to control it, then uh, it's going to run into a lot more thousands of pounds than you expect. Yeah, definitely. So then, really, people will be asking the question. So, well, what is next for my empty buy to let? Do you know, they'll, and and hopefully, what we've spoke about today will get them thinking ahead uh, about right. Okay, if it, if you've got a tenant that's due to leave or you're going to have that period, think about what you could do in between there. And if you have a vacant rental property um, that's that's close by to us, and you've you've obviously been listening to us this morning. Feel free, like I say, my number and my email and things are in the, the blog attached. Come to me and say, look, and I'll happily give you some advice if, if that's what you need. Yeah, I think so. I think I think that's where it is. Um, interestingly enough, there's another one here that you were talking about where I was getting, uh, oh, geez, 350. And now it's going up to 575. What one's that? Uh, well, obviously, I don't know what I was here. Just your number. Yeah, I was getting 350 before, and it's like, geez, now it's going up to 575, and I'm like, wow. Uh, and that's another one that's had a refurb as well. So when you when you look at all this, it's the it's the additional opportunity to add um, an increase in your margins uh, in order to offset things like, you know, let's be honest, you've got huge increase in interest rates. You've got mm -hmm. a huge increase in costs now. Um, you've got huge increase in um, utilities. Because um, you'll be liable for them now and again when it's got a void period. Yeah. Uh, council tax, they're all talking about council tax going up. So some, sometimes you might be liable. Um, it just depends. But you can often get around the council tax. You do have certain exemptions. There's some that people don't know about that we know about um, for certain exemptions for council tax. Um, but the, the obvious one is the six months. Uh, for yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Right. I've got a funny feeling that's going to get repealed and they're going to they're going to look at that later on and then eventually they're going to start nailing everybody at the wall if you've not got your property turned around quick enough they're yeah. going to have discretion they're going to have discretion rather than being in, in law so they're going to have to they're going to turn around and say well that's not acceptable that should have been done within a certain point in time we're going to start the council tax now they have to the, the, you know they're, we're, we're, they're effectively running out of money aren't they and they've got to find yeah. it for somewhere so that's why everybody else is getting squeezed yeah I think it's important just to touch on that, Jim. You said about your property that you had 350 now it's up to. And people might think, God, oh, that's an awful big jump. But they have to remember that. that is, yeah, sorry? It was the type of tenant that was in it before. Yeah, it was under and it was under it was undervalued at the time. It was it was a cheaper rent oh, then. Undervalued. Yeah, and, and then obviously uh, there's been a lot of money spent on it and now it's got and people are willing to pay that because it's it's at a different level now. Yeah, absolutely. I would say so. So this is where it all comes back to saying, um, well, I'll tell you a classic example, and, and I'll go back to the, the we'll, I'll finish up with this story. Yeah. Um, I remember bumping a friend at the golf club years and years ago. I think mm -hmm. we've still got a property under management. And they had actually said to me at the time, it's like, oh, I've got a one bedroom and I'm renting it. And I says, I really can't be bored with it anymore. I really just want to sell it. And I says, well, what do you do with the money when you sell it? Well, no, nothing really. I'll just sit there. Okay. So 
what's what's the issue with where you're having your property right now? I was like, I can't even be bored with the hassle and all the rest of it. I says, what are you renting for? She says, oh, 300 a month. And I went, you can get 360. Mm-hmm. See, we can get 360 easily for that. I says, so if we went to rent it and you gave us the 60 quid, you'd still get your 300 quid. And not have the hassle. And we would be renting it and you wouldn't have the hassle. And, uh, and they're still with us, I think, um, all that time. I think and, that might be, but... and I think that's about 10 years. It will be, yeah. Yeah, that's about 10 years, and they're still with us. And they have nothing to do with it. We manage it all, all the time, and they're still getting the same money, if not probably more now, than they had before. So there's a lot of landlords out there that continue to self-manage, thinking they're, oh, I'm saving money. It's like, you're not. I think I know who you're talking about, Jim, and that one's ticked over for years. It's a a false economy. Our first tenant was actually, I'm not going to touch DSS. And I went, what's wrong with the mic? It's like there's a lot of good people out there in benefits. It'll leave a look after your house. In fact, I've got one lined up for it right now that I could think of for years. And that person moved into there and actually improved the whole property. I remember her coming back to me and saying, I can't believe it. John was round and had a look at the property. She said, she says, the tenants decorated it from top to bottom. I've never had anybody like that. <laughs> yeah, it just shows you though. Um but yeah, no, and I think as well, Jim, um, as we talk about this morning, the void periods and what to do in that, and, and we touched briefly on the opportunity for refinancing and, uh, and things. And we'll 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 probably touch on that on Monday. We're doing the wealth creation show on Monday at 12 30, and that is a uh, talking about cash flow as king. And refinancing and, and tax and things will be a, a good topic for Monday as well. So if uh, if he's watching into that, that will be a good one. My favourite subject, cash flow. Yeah. I would you, hey, listen. Um, turnover is vanity. That's sales. Mm-hmm. Profit is sanity. And cash flow is king. Yeah. That's the key here. That's the key driver for every single business. So even though you're not, inv- you're not involved in property investment, when we're talking about cash flow is king on the Wealth Creation Show, you should be watching it if you're running a business. If you're yeah. managing your household anyway and your household bills and everything like that, you should probably be watching that as well on 12.30 on Monday, the cash flow is king one. Because we'll be, I'll be talking about everything that comes in and takes into account cash flow and how important it is. It is right up there with oxygen. If you don't have cash, you're not going to be able to do anything. You're not going to be able yeah. to get anything in, 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 our, in, our, in our world. If, mm-hmm. essentially nobody wants to do anything for you unless they can make money out of you and that's the key here so you need cash and cash flow to do it you could be you could be extremely profitable i've known loads of companies that have gone out of business even though they're very profitable because they've not got any cash to keep no going cash. they've been yeah. put into administration and then they've been sold off and broken up into small pieces because they've no cash to keep going that's the most important thing. I I've been more profitable than some of the some of the biggest corporations in the whole of the world because the year that they've made a loss, I've made a profit. Yeah. So it's the turnover was idea. was millions. The turnover could be hundreds of millions, and everybody's going, oh, "Swoon, hundreds of millions in turnover," and it's like, but they're making a loss. Yeah. Who cares if you're making a loss? You're out of business, and worse, you've not got any cash. Yeah, so definitely. that's why cash flow is obviously the most important thing for people. And we'll be talking about that on the Wealth Creation Show at 12.30 on Monday. Yes, that'll be a really good topic for Monday. So please, guys, tune into that if, if that sounds like uh, something you, as you say, if you're running a business or you've got a vital portfolio, you, you need to be thinking about that. Jim, you'll be doing your update tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow update Five Profit Market. Update and we'll do the Wealth Creation Show Monday, 12.30. Thanks, for everybody, for watching this morning. And we'll see you all there. Yeah, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thanks, Jim. See you later.